Kate first, Kate first. Walk into the room, Kate first. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Dax, exclamation point, and I am a gay geek. I'm a queer geek. I'm a gay geek. I'm a gay geek. And I'm a gay geek. Being a gay geek means to me, you know, being able to embrace both, you know, the, the gay parts of your life as well as like the things that aren't necessarily super mainstream. I think for me, it's just having one more quirk layered onto one of my other quirks that just makes me a little more special. My geeky interest probably developed about um, almost like 20 years ago when I was brought to my first Comic Con in San Diego, and it just opened up this whole new world. I still remember the first time I, I found out what Pokemon was, and it was when I was, I think, like around sixth grade. I started getting into Marvel specifically, I think in either kindergarten or first grade. As a kid growing up, it's like I didn't really have like a lot of friends. I wasn't that kind of kid. When I say I'm a nerd, I mean I was a fucking nerd. My childhood is, is in a box full of comics and that's my childhood for me. Still buried in my closet, I have like the binder with all of them in like the nine card per sheet organized by number. I have probably estimated total $10,000 worth of Batman stuff. Everything from the cars to the, an actual life-size bat suit on display. I'm like really enjoying Pokemon Go. I get my steps in for my Fitbit. I think in terms of coming out being a geek helped just because I was kind of already used to being slightly outside and slightly quirky. Being able to really embrace the storylines that were present in a lot of the comics, it gave me a lot of strength to really think about what it means to be coming out. So those two journeys actually really aligned for me. When I started to become comfortable with myself as being gay, that's when I was like, I fucking love Pokemon. That's part of who I am. My first love was X-Men. They helped me come out a lot sooner and more confident. X-Men is the penultimate example of an allegory for growing up queer in today's society. So there's a whole spectrum of them, and even though they look and act in and can do things that are radically different, they are a community and they look out for each other. I think what really attracts me to the Marvel canon and a lot of geeks who fall into the queer categories, because we are persecuted for being different through no fault of our own, and no matter what we're doing, we just want to live our lives and try to have some semblance of normalcy and leave the world a better place. Definitely in the past, it was a lot different to be a nerd or a geek in general, let alone be gay. People hate it a lot. Like, I've met guys before, like, they, you know, they actively hide that they read comics or they play Warcraft or they, you know, whatever. I think the most challenging part about being a queer geek is giving people who don't necessarily like you extra ammunition to make fun of you. Whether it's, you know, being obsessed with Pokemon or really loving comic books or what have you, having that be part of your identity sometimes almost feels like giving them one more bullet in the chamber where they can go after you with that. I think the hardest thing about being a queer geek, particularly a queer woman, um, is not being objectified in that space, particularly as a cosplayer. Cosplay is not consent. You do not have any permission to touch me, take photos of me in ways that you're gonna use sexually, so stop it. Just like really, just, just stop it. The one that's probably most meaningful for me is the X-Men Karma, because I think she represents actually my trajectory as being a queer geek. She's an X-Men, she's Vietnamese as well, she's a lesbian, really struggles with her talent um, and trying to find her place in the world. I think that's really what cosplay is about. How can you relate to this and manifest it externally? I do a lot of cosplay as Storm because I've only ever wanted to be her. She is the kind of person who never says I can't. I love my She-Hulk costume, Chitara. I feel like drag queens kind of invented cosplay because drag queens for years have always done things based on movies or TV shows or comics or cartoons or whatever. Um, I, I love Lucy Numbers, or but that's cosplay. My fiance now, like he's a giant nerd. I mean, I'm a nerd, he's a nerd. We cosplay together. Do we have sex in costume? No! You don't want lube on that. That costs money, like no! It does get a little eerie when people find out that I'm a cosplayer and then they want me to dress up and do things and I don't know if that's become part of my taste yet because you feel like you're embodying someone else. If you could date any cannibal, if I could date any superhero, it would be cannibal. Or Nightwing for the butt. People love Gambit, that's great, he's great. Nothing to him. He's a slut and he'll leave you. You gotta fuck Gambit. Like that guy is just, like you look at that character and you're like, you're insane in bed. Plus like if he grabs like the bed the wrong way, it could explode in the middle of sex and who doesn't just want complete bed shrapnel flying like mid orgasm. I, I just come across some one person that I was dating that I wasn't enough of a geek. The only time I get backlash from the gay community for being a geek sometimes is when people realize I have a geeky tattoo. Guys either really like it or really don't get it. I've had guys who are like, 
why would you bother getting an X-Men logo tattooed on your chest? Whereas I've also had guys who are like, so when you jerk off, do you aim for that? <laughs> oh girl. <laughs> if you like superheroes, you gotta love justice. Right? Like, it's just as like a public form of love in so many different ways. I think there's those narratives that we all are seeking justice for ourselves and a sense to be included and have society really accept us. When I first started going to Comic-Con, it was just a sense of like amazement and wonderment as a child, I think, was so important for me to think about what I could be given all that I felt that was against me at that time. Like, I couldn't be a normal person to not you know, make a dumb outfit or draw a picture or make something. I have to express, you know, like my artistic or like, you know, nerd sides of me or else I just don't feel right. Having that one thing in common is a great way of uniting with other people and making that community a little bit more tight knit. Batman really showed me through dark circumstances, being able to find a new light. Yeah, I come from the exact opposite of Batman, being crazy poor in the middle of the slums of Miami and thinking to myself, there must be something more than this. It could be greater. And that's kind of, to me, the same way Batman looks at Gotham. Like, it's, it's crime-ridden and such a slum and all this stuff, but there's potential in each different person. When I was in high school, I was a bit of a con junkie. I went to every con I could find just because, just for no reason. Xenocon. It happened. Yeah, yeah. Literally, in like, a Marriott ballroom, like a shitty, like off the interstate, like Marriott ballroom. Just a big room full of lesbians dressed as Zena and Gabrielle. That's it. No other costumes needed, just Zena or Gabrielle. That's all you got. I was the only male in the room. 